Welcome back to the Roadside Dons channel. In today's video, we visit Dover Castle. There are several parking area, we park at the closest one to the ticket office. The castle is managed by English Heritage, and members can enter for free. The ticket price for non-members is quite expensive, £20.90 if you book online in advance, but you can buy it at the ticket office on the day of your visit, but it is more expensive there. The castle basically, it is divided into two parts, one is a medieval castle, and the other is a World War II facilities, where we can see the underground hospital and get detailed information about Operation Dynamo, i.e. the Dunkirk evacuation. These facilities can be viewed as part of a guided tour. In both sites is forbidden to take photos and videos, so unfortunately we cannot show recordings of them. It is worth starting your visit with these, because you have to stand in line to get in at both places. The castle rises above the White Cliffs of Dover and is one of England's iconic buildings. Built in the 11th century, it was the site of royal intrigues and epic sieges, and also played a major role in the World Wars. It is located in a huge area, so it is worth go at the morning to walk through everything. Now we visit the Fire Command Post and Port War Signal Station. The building was originally built as a gun battery during the First World War and was adapted to serve for main functions, Fire Command Post, for controlling artillery to protect the Strait of Dover, a Port War Signal Station, fully controlling the movement of ships entering and leaving the area, a Royal Navy Signaling and Wireless Communications Center, and it also served as an early warning system. From its top there is a great view of the city and the harbor below us. We go into the building. This was the fire command post, from here they controlled the coastal artillery in the entire harbor area. From this room, the naval staff carried out 24-hour observations of Dover Harbor. They were also responsible for communicating to the Royal Navy warships. This is a common area where the table is set for breakfast. These rooms were designed to accommodate a team of five, three of whom slept in this room, and the office here was for the person in charge of watch duty, which was usually done by a chief petty officer or a lieutenant. In this room was the telegraph equipment of the signal station, as well as the telegraph operator's bed. At the beginning of the 20th century, telegraph equipment was large and noisy, so the telegraphist himself had to sleep here. Now we see the officer's bedroom. The signal station was manned 24 hours a day. This huge building has survived from Victorian times and served as a barracks, now completely empty. In the 1970s, a failed attempt was made to turn it into a visitor center. This had the unfortunate side effect of stripping much of the interior, including paneled walls and ornate fireplaces. We pass through the Colton Gate, on the left side of which you can see the remains of the wall that stretched on both sides in the 13th century. A total of three Roman lighthouses have survived in the world and one of them is located here. This lighthouse, or Pharos, is England's tallest and most complete Roman structure still standing today. 
The five-level, eight-sided tower was made of lasers of tufa, Kentish ragstone and red bricks at the beginning of the second century. It was later converted into the bell tower of the neighboring church. The Church of St. Mary in Castro was used from the 11th century until the late 17th, then became abandoned, but was restored by the Victorians. Services are still held here for members of the army as well as civilian visitors. We walk through the palace gate and we reach the inner bailey of the castle. Before entering the castle, we can take a look at a small chancel, which was built here for the purpose of allowing guests to stop here and give thanks for their safe arrival before entering the castle. Unusually, the entrance is on the second floor. Originally, this area would have been open to the sky, but was roofed over in the 15th century. The lion on the banner represents Henry II father, Geoffrey Plantagenet, who used the lion as his own symbol. In the corner, you can see the well chamber, which provided access to the well of the Great Tower, which at the time was 122 meters deep. This room was probably the guard chamber. The windows are original, which wouldn't have contained glass. We enter to the King's Hall. The doors are new, but made after the fashion of the Middle Ages. The remains of the original ornate arch around it are still visible. To the left, in this small room, you can see another well. It is only 85 meters deep and was built inside the castle to be accessible even during a siege. It was also the center of the water circulation system, where pipes built into the wall was leading to a room below the King's Hall. We enter the hall. In the past, hanging curtains were used instead of tapestries to make rooms warmer. The room was originally used for several purposes, as a venue for meal ceremonies, government meetings, and as a bedroom for some members of the household. The furniture seen in the king's chamber today is not original, but has been carefully reproduced based on surviving examples and paintings. Two rooms open from this chamber. A dressing room. And a smaller one that served several purposes, converted into a private bedroom in the 15th century. Today it's set up as a scriptorium, used for copying manuscripts. At the end of the hall, a staircase leads to a small hidden chapel, which was reserved for the king and important guests.
We go up a spiral staircase to the roof, which was added in the 18th century, to house cannons. Today it serves as a great vantage point for the parts of the castle below and the city of Dover. The layout of the first floor is similar to the second, first we will enter the hall again. Next to the entrance, you can see a small room that served as a toilet, as well as another, which could be a storage room. These rooms were presumably built to provide accommodation for high-ranking guests and other members of the family. The table is set for the king, who sits directly under an image of him. The bedroom has the same layout as the king's chamber. Several royal guests have stayed in this room in the past. The extra beds were placed for the servants to be at hand at night if anything was needed. In the 18th century, the castle was filled with prisoners of war, which at that time served as a prison instead of a royal shelter. The decoration that can be seen today is all reminiscent of the time of Henry II, as he ordered its construction and was the last king to use it as a residence. The kitchen can be seen on the ground floor, but there is no concrete evidence that these rooms were actually used as a kitchen. Castle kitchens were very important, as the variety and quantity of food served to guests reflected the wealth of the court. Many bowls and containers are visible, but there are no kitchen utensils, as people ate with their hands at the time. A few other rooms also open from the inner bailey. This is the Arthur Hall, which was built for King Henrik III in the 13th century. Today it is a museum which tells the story of King Henry II. We leave the inner bailey through the King's Gate, which still holds its original barbican or outer defenses. This is an original piece of the castle complex. The St. John's Tower was built to strengthen the defense. A network of underground tunnels runs under it, which in case of siege greatly helped the defense of the castle and the launch of attacks. These medieval tunnels were partially remodeled in the 18th century. A covered passage to the St. John's Tower was built and cannons were placed, which were specially designed to fire only at a short distance. Today, only a part of the tunnels is accessible.
The Avranche Tower is part of the original late 12th century curtain wall, designed to defend and block off the original entrance to Dover Castle. It is a remarkable polygonal tower with two tiers of arrow loops. We check out if there are any soldiers left here. Safety first! Clear terrain. These gunpowder magazines, built in the 19th century, were designed to store small amounts of gunpowder for immediate use. We have reached the end of today's castle tour. We hope you had fun and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Stay tuned, we'll see you in the next video, in which you can take a virtual walk with us at the White Cliffs of Dover. Thank you for watching.